are watching West Harper Community yeah. Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello and welcome to Art Talks. This is the show where we talk about and talk to artists, and we talk to musicians sometimes and poets, and we talk about their creativity. I'm Joanne Bauer, the host of Art Talks for West Hartford Community TV, and I'm very thrilled today to welcome my three guests who are folks all connected with the National Arts Program in Greater Hartford. My first guest is Nancy Shapiro, who actually coordinates the program, and sitting next to her is an artist, Rare Womack, and we're very happy to have you also. And then finally, Colin Haskins, who is a poet, and he's going to talk about how the poetry connects with the art, and he heads up the Free Poets Collective. So welcome to all three of you. Thank you. Nancy, I want to start with you, and I want you to just tell me some of the background of the National Arts Program in Hartford, and also what it means most to you. Okay, well the National Arts Program was created by a gentleman named Leonard Andrews, who was a uh, huge patron of the arts and a collector of of Andrew Wyeth, and he felt that um, everybody should have an opportunity to participate in the arts and to express their creativity through, through art. And he approached various municipalities and organizations like Community Renewal Team, who was the company that is, is pr producing this particular National Arts Program. Out of Hartford. Out of Hartford. And invited us to um, hold an annual art competition, uh, invite members of the community to participate and display their art, and have the opportunity to, uh, to win prizes and have their artwork shown in a gallery and mm -hmm. also to just, just enjoy participation in something that they otherwise might not have an opportunity to do. Now, I think I read that it started in 1982, perhaps, nationally. It did. And in Hartford, this is going to be the... This is our 23rd year, 23rd so we've been doing year. it for a really long time. Over time, the program has evolved, and it, um, it is what it is today, and I think it gets better every time that we do it, because we have involvement with a, a number of different people and organizations that um, help us to really promote what we're doing. Excellent. And you, I know you've been involved with coordinating this wonderful program for over 10 years. I have. What appeals to you most about the National Arts Program and, and specifically in Hartford? What I think appeals to me most is the personal stories that are connected to mm -hmm. so many of the pieces. I mean, over and over again, artists come in and they bring their piece and we talk a, bit, a little bit about it. And I, I learn stories from, from their lives. I mean, one of the people this year that's participating, and I think I've shared this, this with you, is an autistic child who really doesn't communicate very well, but he communicates through his artwork. Mm -hmm. uh, I had another um, teacher send me a note today. He's a professor at Capital Community College. And he used the National Arts Program with all the artists hanging as an opportunity to um, teach his class and allow them to express themselves um, in, in, uh -huh. in writing. Well, and in fact, we should say a number of things that you just uh, tapped into. You were talking about a young person. And so you have artists, right, from, from any age, right, from young too Correct. old. Um, we have we have artists um, starting um, in the youth division. There are artists ages six and six through twelve. We have teens ages uh, thirteen through eighteen, and then we have amateur profession, intermediate, and professional artists. Uh, people always ask um, what defines an amateur or an intermediate or professional, and we we let our artists uh, self declare. But we generally say an amateur has little or no experience, an intermediate has a little bit of experience, and a professional has an art-related job or um, sells his artwork for money. Right. And so within each of those categories, 
we have prizes. Of course, I know this because you invited me, and this is the second year that I've been one of the judges, and I feel very honored to do that. And so there are prizes in the categories, but there's no entry fee, right? Am I correct no, about every, that? Everything is free, and that, that's, that's somewhat of the uh, purpose of the National Arts Program, where many shows are juried. This is not. Everybody who enters their art has their art shown. Um, it's displayed in wonderful gallery space at Capital Community College. There are two galleries downstairs, and then throughout the 11th floor of the college. It's free and open to the public at all times. And the college is open, I believe, from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m., Monday through Friday, and then until 4 o'clock on Saturday. So people really have an opportunity to get out there and see the art. Some of it is for sale. And, that, um, and if anybody would be interested in purchasing a piece, what we do is connect the artist to the person interested. Excellent. Excellent. And I'm glad you uh, explain to us where we can view this this magnificent show because tell us how many pieces are in the show this year. Yeah, this year we have more than 300 pieces uh, which really g gave us a, a huge um, undertaking but it, it's all hanging. We um, we have s some uh, youth and teen art but we have a huge number of, uh, of adult entries and I'm always in, um, really impressed by the fact that the artists are so thrilled to be able to have an opportunity to show their art because I gather that artists don't always have that many chances. So. Right. And, and the fact that there's not an entry fee ma really makes it more accessible to everyone also right. because many uh, other galleries in the greater Hartford area, even just to get into the opportunity to be selected, costs you money. So that's one thing that's really wonderful about this show from my perspective is that it's open to everyone. You get a diversity of artists, you get a diversity of, of types of art, and, and it's free. So then we have prize winners. And yes, we do. We have just not, not, only, not only just first prize winners, right, in each category, but... We have, uh, we have a number of awards. In each category, we always award honorable mentions and then first, second, and third prizes in every category. And some of them have, do have money connected to them, so there is an incentive for people to participate. And then for those that don't win a monetary prize, they have uh, the good feeling that they have, um, have an opportunity to share their creativity with others. That's right. And, and is it still the case that everyone gets a certificate of participation? Um, everybody does receive a certificate. If they come to the show, we, we, have, um, we have a show this, uh, on Saturday, uh, which I'm sure will be over by the time this is shown. However, it's being held at, at Capital Community College on January 25th. And we invite all of the artists. We invite their families to see the artwork. We have a, a, um, an awards ceremony where we give out the art, and we have some wonderful entertainment to accompany it. And you're very modest, Nancy. Uh, I would want to say about the show that not only as you've described it, but you create a wonderful program. This happens to be last year's program. You and your department at CRT create a wonderful program. And then all, all of it or so much of the art is actually displayed also in, in the auditorium. Yeah, what we do is we, um, the art is displayed throughout the building and people don't often have the opportunity to see the pieces. So what we do is we're very fortunate in that they have a very large screen and we f when a name is announced of the winner, we flash the artwork that, that won in that right. particular area. And so that is it's so great, it really is. And it's a colorful, in every respect, it's a colorful ceremony. I so much enjoy it. And I know Rare that you, this is Rare Womack, who's our artist today, and she's going to speak to for the creativity part, although Nancy denies that she's an artist. But of course, <laughs> this is all very artistic in your coordination of it. And also, I think you told me you wrote, write poetry too, right? But not so the I want poems you're concerned <laughs> with here. <laughs> and we will talk about poetry later. But um, Rare, you represent our artist today, and you've brought in pieces for us to see. And yes, I did. did you tell me this was the second year that you've uh, entered the National Arts Program? Yes, it is. Right. Mm -hmm. And tell us what happened last year. Last year, I just happened upon a pamphlet. Um, a friend of mine who is also a friend of uh, CRT employees uh, gave me the brochure mm -hmm. telling me about the program. And she was aware that I, um, it's hard for me to find a way to show or to showcase my work. And it was just the ideal opportunity. Oh, wonderful. So, Entering last year, um, I did receive mention on one of my paintings, and which was... And you had an honorable mention. I did, right. and um, 
it's just very encouraging. It's encouraging, it's, it's fulfilling, it's just the fact that I have some place to showcase and can allow others to see a part of me and what I do. To really see your work. Mm -hmm. And maybe you want to say briefly how you got into art, how you became an artist. Would you like to talk? That about wasn't really very pleasant. Um, I had suffered uh, from vascular disease. I, I suffer from vascular disease. And um, at the time, uh, the pain that I was experiencing was so severe that I needed some type of escape. I needed a way to take my mind off of things. And I found myself in a Hobby Lobby and I picked up a paintbrush and some paints and a canvas, not knowing anything about painting. And um, I found it to be an escape. It was my escape. It was a way to um, get away and not think about all of the pain that I was, I was enduring. I, so. I think I <clears throat> read in your artist statement, you used the word release, that it had mm -hmm. some function of, of releasing you from the chronic pain condition and that it had a, a therapeutic benefit for you. Definitely, it definitely does. It, it still does. Um, anytime, I could look at any one of my paintings and it would just, I could recapture things, I could recapture feelings, I could, I could still get away to that place mm -hmm. that led me to that work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that also one thing that interests you is colors and the way they're related to shapes. Maybe right. we can talk about, I'm thinking this one, but any of them that you would like to focus in on, do you want to tell us a little well, bit about? Overall, I am an abstract painter. Um, I do focus a lot on um, geometric abstraction. Um, and I but think that this piece probably is the most recognizably right. geometric, Geometri yeah. right? Yeah. Um, there is no real structure. There is no real, um, there's no main focus. It's just what happens. It's just, it could be a word. It could be a photo. It could be um, any type of object. It's, I don't actually see, like the, the book on the table, I'll see that pamphlet but I don't just see the pamphlet. I'm seeing ways of breaking it and, and fragmenting it and, and turning it. I, I'll see the colors. This is really hard to explain. I, it's, it's just No, a, you're doing a great <laughs> job. And it, this is something that our audience cares about, knowing how artists get involved and how they think and what inspires them. Well, if you were to place a cup in front of me, <laughs> I will paint that cup. It may not appear to be the cup that you see, <laughs> right? but it'll be a cup. <laughs> Do you remember, going back, what, what might have been the inspiration for this piece, the initial inspiration? Was it a word, a cup, a color? <laughs> um, this actually um, is somewhat, f it's a family thing. Uh -huh. um, once a year I get to see certain family members that I only get to see once a year. Mm -hmm. And it's a festive occasion for me. Mm -hmm. And um, knowing that and, and things that they like to do, the, these particular aunts of mine are um, always going to Mardi Gras and things of, oh of that goodness. type. So it's just an incorporation of a lot of feelings about certain people. It's absolutely things. about joy to me. Wouldn't you say so, Colin? Absolutely. We, we can see that in the colors and the energy, um, the movement around, around the piece. This piece is somewhat different. Um, maybe you would compare and contrast it a little bit or talk to us about the source of this piece. Um, I, I've, for so, whatever reason, I'm into circles. Circles? I'm into, I'm into circles. Uh, one of the pieces that I um, put into the competition last year was circles. <laughs> and oh, that's it right. was a matter Colorful of. Um, and we can see the circles, many circles here. There's many circles. But um, it also seems to me a, a woman's body. It is. I know you're working in abstracts, it but it seems to have a and female figure. And a closer look, figure. you can see a fetus. Yes. Wonderful. With a heartbeat. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. And then this piece 
feels very much different, a little bit more static than, mm -hmm. than these that have lines and energy and circles. Um, would you say that or not? I would. Um, when I do that type of work, that is more of, um, it's more of a getaway as mm -hmm. far as mine because it's, it's so much more that, um, uh, That's okay. We can. We, we don't have to d delve into your your personal life. But it takes I, a lot more to do that type of piece. It's it's more involved mind wise. To do wise, this to right. do this type of piece. It's more involved mind wise. There's more to think about the structure of it all. Um, so it's so it it almost seems a little bit more formulaic, and as you're saying, a little bit more mental. Where these is. might have a, a a more vivid emotional component. Exactly. Now, I want to introduce Colin Haskins, who is a poet and is quite a coordinator of poetry uh, and poets, a coordinator of poets. Colin has the uh, Free Poets Collective, which is Connecticut-based, but very international as a, as a poet group. And the reason, well, tell us the reason you're, how you're connected to the National Arts Program, Colin. I am connected uh, through the book that we did, we compiled for our members, our own Exiles Press. This is a book for the New Britain Museum of American Art. Uh, each poem in there is based on a painting in the museum's collection. And then, Joanne, you got us to the National Arts Project. So I want to thank you, and I want to thank Nancy um, for the opportunity to, to do this again as we were part of this last year. And we're, we're doing something very similar. We're, taking six poets and having them write about the six contest winners, um, which is a repeat of last year's program, and, but with different poets and different paintings. So That's true, a completely I'm different set of, of poems. And, and you're right, now that, now that I think back to it, I saw the, right. the event at the New Britain Museum, right. and I was thinking about ekphrasis and mentioned it to Nancy, and Nancy embraced the idea, and we said, let's, let's give it a try. And I would say, Nancy, that we were both surprised at how well it was received last year. Right. You know, when you try something new, you never how, know, know how it's going right. to turn out and how it'll be received. But we tried it, and I was a bit nervous going in. But the response to the poetry was absolutely incredible. People loved it. Um, we hadn't made copies of the poems, but um, every one of the artists wanted a copy of, of the poem written about their work. Um, and people were extremely impressed with the whole concept of a crisis. It was amazing. It, it, it was amazing, and it was truly a, a reflective of a community effort, I, I thought. And I didn't know either going in how it would be, but but when we heard the words and and saw and saw and heard the words paired to the visual imagery, and so nice that they were projected, that the pieces were projected there. Oh my goodness! It 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 was an echoing, a layering of, of the artistic experience, I think. I was explaining to him earlier also that um, it puts a whole new perspective on the work itself. Yes. Because no one really knows what the artist is thinking when they put their work up. You don't know what led to that piece. Right. And the artist then gets a, an idea of what someone else sees. Right. You know? That's so true, mm -hmm. and it's and it's what that one particular poet sees too. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. what everyone sees, but it's that that person's response. Mm -hmm. to, and that's really we've talked about ekphrasis a few times on this show, and that's really what it what it means. It's one one art genre talking to another, interacting, responding, and sometimes it can be just um, just a reaction. That, that mostly happens inside the poet, that maybe it's inspired, but it's not necessarily a literal interpretation at all of, of the artwork. Now, I know, Colin, you have with you a, a poem today, actually, and that's something that I'm going to ask you to read. This was one of our poets last year, Lorna Sear, wrote this in the space of eight or nine days after the prize winners were chosen but not announced yet. We, May I we also knew them. say that Lorna Sear this year entered the National Arts Program. Yes. Oh, 
great. Because she was so impressed with the whole concept of uh, what we were doing. So she's one of the uh, people who entered this year's oh, competition. Oh, wonderful. That's, that's really wonderful. I had forgotten that that was the case. This is the poem that's in response to Haitian woman. Right. And I'm ready to go on that. Um, so Haitian woman um, by Mark Eves Regis, um, written by Lorna Sear. She grew up as the tree, face crafted by sun, lines deep, chiseled, as the land on which she walks, focused on survival. Eyes squint under the hat of straw, scarf of homespun linen, graced with color. She walks on feet of clay, rural roots, tracing dusty barren trails, mud walls, thatched leaves of palm, rice, cow peas, yams, corn, beets. Crops yield in fallow soil, crossing mountains of faith, a visitor calls one, offering sweetbread and coffee. She responds, respe bande, si yon ban bouguet. God is good. She is Haitian woman. Thank you. So Colin, tell us then a little bit more about, well, maybe about your experiences as a poet, but also in particular about your collective, because it is international. It is. It is. Um, we're growing in three years' time. Of course, it's based on the spoken word series, so very old. But in three years' time, we've, our, our membership worldwide is currently at 1,000 on Facebook. and. Um, you know, there's over maybe 20 or 25 that aren't on Facebook that are just local. Um, so we were born on social media. Born and on social media? We pretty much <laughs> were. Our group focuses on social media, mm -hmm. and uh, we were just there at the right time and have had tremendous success with it. And, and again, I want to thank you, Nancy and, and Joanne, for this opportunity. Uh, we have a long history with, with poetry and visual arts. Um, we have did not under Free Poets, but under the Spoken Word series. We've worked mm -hmm. with the Wadsworth Athenaeum and the Marsden Hartley Collection. And, uh, and you've been involved with some landmarks, too, I read, with yes. some, some landmarks. Is, is that just mostly in Connecticut? Uh, no, not just in Connecticut. Um, we've done the Big E. This year we were at the Connecticut Building of the Big E uh, mm -hmm. for last year. And uh, every year in summer, we're at the home of uh, famed poet Edna St. Vincent Millay in oh, Austerlitz, right. New York. Right. Um, been involved with street poets in uh, Brooklyn. So it's, it's not just Connecticut. Now, at, at most of your events that you're, you're discussing, you're describing right now, do you have ekphrasis opportunities, or is it primarily poetry and spoken word, perfor maybe performance poetry? Oh, we, uh, Ekphrasis is a very large part of is what it? we do, yes, mm -hmm. because as, as I mentioned, you know, through Lorna, she gets us at the open studio in Hartford mm -hmm. and having worked with the museum, and um, I don't want to mention what museum, but I'm in communication with another one to mm -hmm. bring the same type of program mm -hmm. to another mm -hmm. visual arts. And, and through the Buttonwood Tree, which we're at every month, every first Saturday of the month, we're at the Buttonwood Tree. That's very important to mention. Uh, and that has an ongoing art gallery, and so we are very connected with the other arts, not just poetry. And the Buttonwood Gallery is in what Middletown, city? 605 Main Street in Middletown. Okay. It's open seven days a week, and uh, we did a program this there this last September that was called Muse Fest that incorporated all of the arts. So we had Excellent. dance and drama, and so that was sort of a nice expansion for us. Excellent. And so if somebody wants more information, they can go to Free Poets Collective on Facebook, on I Facebook. know, and, and also a website. Correct. Uh, freepoetscollective.webs.com. Excellent. So we are just about at the end of the program. It always goes so fast, and I want to very much thank all of you, mm -hmm. and I want to thank the station manager here in our station and also our camera people who help us out. And I want to give an opportunity, if there's any final thing that any of you would like to say. Oh, well, of course I'd like to say something. I, I just wanted to say that um, I, um, it, it's the community renewal team uh, really brings this program to Hartford. and. Um, 
CRT has a reputation for doing, for, for doing, bringing things to Hartford that really make a difference to the community. Absolutely. And I just want to give a shout out to CRT, who is my employer, but, but more importantly, who really serves the needs of the economically disadvantaged throughout the greater Hartford area mm -hmm. and Middlesex County as well. And, and you can see within the arts program itself how it's about bringing people together and people of all sorts of uh, stages and places and ages and, and it's, it's wonderful what CRT Thank does. You. Thank you. I'd like to also give a shout out to CRT. I am most grateful for this opportunity and being introduced to it last year, it just, it's made a huge difference. And oh, um, I also wonderful. would like to thank you for this invitation. Oh, I'm so glad you could make it here today. It means a lot to me that all three of you were here. Thank I want to thank you so much. And um, again, this is Joanne Bauer for Art Talks on West Hartford Community Television.